এবং মহাকাশ ইউনিভার্সিটি প্রোগ্রাম বিশ্ববিদ্যালয় প্রোগ্রাম শুরু করেন মহারাজ এবং ইসকনে যে প্রথম ট্রাভেলিং সংকীর্তন পার্টি শুরু হয়েছিল মহারাজ সেটা স্পন্সর করেছিলেন এবং মহারাজ এন ডি টিভিতে উই দ্য পিপল নামে একটা রেডিও শো করেছিলেন এবং মহারাজ তিনি আমেরিকা এশিয়া ইন্দোনেশিয়া মালয়েশিয়া থাইল্যান্ড ইন্ডিয়া প্রভৃতি দেশে তিনি প্রসাদ করেন এবং ভ্রমণ করে থাকেন হরে কৃষ্ণ
Uh, unknown fact that festival was not produced by Jayananda. So, I mean, uh, Jeta, Jayananda Prabhu, Jeta, so that festival was produced by my brother, Narayan Das. Uh, Isn't that photo with his back to the camera on the left side, on the left side? That's Narayan Das. He produced in 1970, Rathi Atra. I was there, so I know about it. was only an assistant that year. But nobody knows that. The only persons remaining who know that practically is yes. uh, Bhavananda Prabhu, he was there. So, as much as Bhavananda Prabhu, he was there, he was there, he was there, he was there. I was there, I don't know if there's any, oh well, maybe there was a few other old-timers that were there. So, Alpha Vaid John Prabhu, he was there, he was there, he was there. So, it's a... Uh, that's a very old photograph. So, it's a very old photograph. The black body devotee with the Madanga, that is Siddhama. He was sent out to the friend Siddhama Maharaj. So, it's a very old photograph. The Madanga body devotee with the Madanga, that is Siddhama Maharaj. He was sent out to the friend Siddhama Maharaj. The Madanga body devotee with the Madanga, that is Siddhama Maharaj. The Madanga body devotee with the Madanga, that is Siddhama Maharaj. The Madanga body devotee with the Madanga, that is Siddhama Maharaj. That's Guru Kripa. You know who Guru Kripa is? He's not known by the newer generations. But he is in the history of Iskand, a very important devotee. So, Adonik, Nukum Bhaktara Taki Janana, Kintu Iskone Ritihase, Tinia Jan Guru Tukunno Vekti. He used to have a collection party. Sir, it's a collection party. With the funds that he collected, the Lotus Building was built in, in Mayapur. He also funded the digging and development of the, of the lake in Mayapur. So he should be recognized for this extremely valuable service that he performed in those days. It was a very wonderful event. You see, Sri Prabhupada was riding on Subhadra's chariot. The Vyasa son is on Subhadra's chariot. In those days, devotees would come from wherever, who could ever afford it to fly, would come from all over the world to San Francisco. Ratheatra, there was only, originally there was only one Ratheatra in San Francisco. All the other Ratheatras came later. Yes, the moon was expanding. Los Angeles, New York, those came, those festivals were produced substantially later. And gradually, they expanded all over the world. I think I should tell you about how Lord Jagannath came to Iskand. It's a fun pastime. If I presume that Sri Prabhupada introduced Jagannath. <coughs> It's not quite that simple. It was an unusual and ecstatic pastime of Lord Jagannath. Lord Jagannath took Siddha Prabhupada by surprise. 
He arrived in America, Jagannath arrived in America by surprise. He did not see the Prabhupada know in advance by Yoga Maya. He did not let Siddha Prabhupada know in advance that he was coming. He came on his own, by his own sweet will. He wanted to come to America, so he did. Here's the way the true story goes. My guide sister Malati, who is now on the GBC, she was in San Francisco, we started in 1967, 68. She was there in San Francisco Temple when I joined in 67. So, uh, was there also. Okay, Ms. Jibona, she was in San Francisco at that time. So, it was an extended family, it was very wonderful mood. So, one day, you know, things were pretty loose in those days, early as, days of rule, and things were pretty loose. So she, uh, she was married at that time. She used to be married to Shama Sindhya Prabhu. So one day, she was at downtown San Francisco, and there was an Indian import store named Cost Plus. So, she just wandered into the store, she went into the store. There was a bamboo basket. In the bamboo basket, she saw some funny looking little figure. She had no clue. It was an India import store. All 100% imports from India. So Shri Prabhu was called Swamiji in those days. He was not called Prabhu till later. So she picked up this little funny looking figure out of the basket. She thought, well, this is a funny looking little thing. I wonder what it is. It was Juggernaut. There was no security cameras in those days. She didn't have much money. So she just looked around and she stuffed little Lord Juggernaut to about uh, four inches tall only. Uh, Nobody is watching, so she's put him into her pocket. <laughs> she was thinking, well, I wonder what this funny looking little thing is. <laughs> well, it's from India, so sorry, you must know what it is. <laughs> so she took Lord Jagannath, little Lord Jagannath, four inches tall. Back to the temple. There was a temple. So she came into Srila Prabhupada's room. Offered obeisances. And pulled Lord Zagrath out of her pocket. And she sat him down on Prabhupada's table. Prabhupada's eyes got very big. Oh, Jagannath has come. He didn't know. Although 
Mitchell said I try to liberate the devotees. They are, uh, they know everything. But due to Yoko Maya, you see, Jagannath wanted to surprise even Srila Prabhupada. So he appeared of his sweet will. Prabhupada didn't make some big, big arrangement to import Jagannath from India. No, he came on his own sweet will because he wanted to. So, the Vyo Mitra Sita Vokhara Shop Kitu Janem Kintu, Jogomaya, Bogoan, Jogomaya, Vistareta, Bopatke, Sita Guri, Dilen, Avon, Bogoan, Jogona, Nije, Vice, Bopate, Kasa, Vipoto, Hilen, Avon, Naja, Bopat, India, Take, Jogona, Kinija, Nonek, Borobora, I don't for any, Kintu, Jogona, Nije, Vice, Bopate, Kasa, Vipoto, Hilen, Karan, Bopat, Jogona, Kesi, Hilen. So then Sita Prabhupada asked very cautiously, were there others? In other words, were there other little figures? So she went back to the store and sure enough there was Baladev is a wonder in a basket also. So again, she secretly stuffed them into her pocket. They were stolen. They were going to stole his way to America. So he came back. She came back to the temple and Shodham Prabhupada was very pleased. He offered obeisance immediately. Malati had no clue that this was the Supreme Personality Godhead. When she brought in the Jagannath, she was shocked. Because immediately Shodham Prabhupada offered obeisances. He said, Oh, Jagannath has come and he offered the basis. That was Jagannath's pastimes, how he left India. He wanted to surprise even in his spirit of Ori. So, anyways, that was a wonderful festival. Now for today's verse, first I will read. 22nd verse is a verse before today's verse. This is about uh, Kasyapa Bhuni. Kasyapa is one of the original Prajapadis of the universe. He is an actual big devotee. He is still up there on the higher planets. His big, big personality is named the Shimabhagya on the seventh, Sapta Rishi, and so many other great saints and sages mentioned in the Bhagavatam, they are still alive up on the higher planets. Amazing fact is that by the mercy of Siddha Prabhupada, everyone sitting here will go back to home back to Godhead before they do. That's, that's the power of Shri Prabhupada's mercy. Because he is an eternal resident of the Braj. All of our acharyas are eternal residents of Vrindava. They are Manjaris. <laughs> Narutam Dastakur. Narutam Dastakur. Shri all of them are eternal residents of Raj. Shri Vajasajya, Tara Sakaliyatim, Bhavani, Nikta, Patra. 
And they descend into this world by the will of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In order to teach Krishna consciousness. So in more recent times, Dr. Bhaktivinoda also. Bhaktivinoda Thakur also Mandari. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur also Mandari. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur also Mandari. We are talking about the Sarup, their spiritual body, their spiritual lila. On the other hand, Srila Prabhupada, many disciples strongly believe that he may be a uh, coward boy and not Mandari. Malati says like that. Uh, Prabhupada revealed it to some one of my god sisters way back in 1969. He revealed. Not, not by, by, by revelation, I mean to say, verbally he revealed. That's what Malati is basing it on. And he, uh, one Vaishnavi wrote a poem uh, in which she was glorifying Prabhupada as if he were a coward boy. So Prabhupada was very pleased. He said, publish it and back to the magazine. And when he was praying to Krishna when he first came to the United States, he wrote a poem, when will I play with you, when will I roll on the ground and ecstasy like that, you know? Manjari is still under like that. But Prabhupada wrote that. So there are clues then of Prabhupada's. Niti Lila. There are clues. I would not repeat it unless Malati did we see in a strongly standing by that position. So are you ready for the concept that we are more fortunate than these big, big sages up on the higher planets? Are you ready for that for whom? You are? That's great. First class. Because the lifespan of the devas is 14 trillion 300 billion years. So if you're not serious about Krishna consciousness, but all that sukriti, all the pious activities to carry on, and a bead bag and chanting namabhas and namaparad and all that, you're qualified to go to heavenly planets? Uh, you want to go to heavenly planets? No. There's many beautiful women up there, you know. <laughs> Lots of wealth. You can get as much. No paper, no, paper. no paper money up there. <laughs> Only diamonds, jewels, gold, sapphires, rubies, real gems only. No paper money. And so all the days they can just go to Kuvera. Uh, they can, this heavenly treasure, they can get whatever they need for their Whereas there are also devotees of Lord Vishnu. 
But there are what's known as Sakama. Kama doesn't just mean lust, Kama means desire. So Kama, Sakama means having material desires. Oh, there's very less pure devotees amongst the demigods. Because they're too much in the enjoying mood. That was the problem with Navakavara and, and Manigriva. They are the sons of Kuvera. But they were down on this planet. Enjoying. Or at least maybe they weren't on this planet, but somehow or other they were in a situation where they came in contact with Narada Muni. So Jodhya Tara is about the Nahlo, the Kumavi, Tara Narada Muni, some of those cases. They were very intoxicated. Tara Kishamoy of Santa Moto or Taisiga. They were bathing naked with beautiful naked young girls. Tara Ulongo Naija Sate, Ulongo Yes, Nango Siga. Well, they were so intoxicated they didn't notice when Narada Muni came along. They didn't even try to cover their naked bodies. Seeing this Narada was very displeased. He decided he should give them a benediction of a curse. And Narada style curse is uh, a curse with a benediction attached. Because they were naked, they wanted nudity. He cursed them to become trees. What kind of trees? So he wanted to benedict them as well as teach him a lesson he wanted to give them. So he gave the benediction that there would be trees in Vrindavan. And those trees were pulled down by little Krishna when he dragged the uh, butter churning device between the two trees. The trees broke and these beautiful devas came out and offered their races at the temple. and association with Krishna and living in the holy dham, even though they were trees, they became to a this was Narada's benediction for them. Then they went back up to the heavenly planets again. Even though they had the darshan with Krishna, but they did not become a sun state of the Krishna book because they became uh, pure devotees necessarily. But they were purified, so they were purified by the darshan of Krishna. But they went up again to the heavenly planets. So, for fourteen trillion three hundred billion years, the devas are enjoying sense enjoyment up there. They are enjoying sense enjoyment Lots of money, beautiful girls, as much sex as you like, mystic powers, fabulous weapons, controlled by mantra, weapons that modern military would love to get their hands on weapons like that. Military, the Ostrogulus, Sigulus, and Sidakam, as put the 
Modern nuclear weapons are very, very crude in comparison to the weapons that are used by the Davis. Very high tech. The technology is unknown today. We hear from the Bhagavatam how uh, the uh, embryo in the womb of Mother Uttara, the mother of Mahakrishna, Ashutam, the uh, you know, infamous personality from the Shima Bhagavatam. So He wanted to kill off the last of the other dynasty. So demoniac attitude. So he sent his weapon into the womb of Mother Uttara. In order to kill Maharaja. Such technology that the Mother Uttara would not have been affected at all by the high-tech weapon he was using. That type of technology is not available today. Medical science would love to get their hands on it, but they can't. So you know the story, Krishna had to personally appear to save Maharaj Krishna. So when he took birth, his villagers named him Purchid. That means someone who is always seeking. Because after that darshan with Krishna in the womb, simply his whole life, he was simply looking, how can I find out Krishna again? Purely, he was purely Krishna conscious from birth. Yeah, complete purification of darshan and the womb. So 14 million three, three uh, 14 trillion three hundred billion years. All these big, big personalities have to rot up on the higher planets. People in this world want to live a long time. They try to figure out how they can live longer, 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 even though their life is worthless. Because they have very less relationship with the Supreme Lord than what is the point of living at all. So they have to face all their sinful reactions and go down to hell. Yeah, they're going to call you. Super Yeah, they're going to call you. Super Yeah, they're So, Kasyapa, he's up there on the higher planets also. Very powerful Prajapati. And <coughs> their, their service is, the Prajapati is, their service is populating the universe. Not only with human beings, but all varieties of species, 8,4,000 species they create. So on this 22nd verse, a hint is given about this, how this Prajapati's like Kashyapa, are creating different species in this world. This verse says that he had four wives. 
Vinata or Sapurna Vinoda Vasuporna Kaju Patangi Kasu Patangi Yamini Among Yamini. Patangi gave birth to many kinds of birds. Patangi Nahapakal Pakide Prasap Purishan. So she's in a body of a beautiful deva, you know. She looks like a woman. She is a female, of course she's a woman. But at the same time, they have these mystic powers by which she can give birth to birds. We don't find any women in this world that can give birth to birds. So the verse of Supreme Lord, it must give them a place whereby they can play out their material desires. That place is called the material world. Where we are. But then again, we're not really in the material world. The devotees who chant Hare Krishna are not actually in the material world. Here we are in personal association of Jagannath Baladeva Subhadra and Radha Madhava. Do they live in the material world? What do you think? Absolutely. Oh, here. The Jagannath Baladeva Subhadra Radha Madhava, do they live in the material world? They do? <laughs> How many of you agree? <laughs> you agree that they live in the material world? <laughs> How many of you disagree? <laughs> Just like most of you agree that they live in the material world. All respects for Bruce. Krishna can never live in the material world. Never. He is always surrounded by Ladini Shakti. Ladini Shakti is the internal potency. Ladini Shakti is the internal potency. That means Radharani. So, Lord Vishnu is consorting with the goddess of fortune. The goddess of fortune is the expansion of Shrimati Radharani. This way, the internal potency of the Lord is always within the superior energy of the Lord. The so-called material world is inferior energy. You've heard this hundreds of times. But what does inferior mean? Not the same quality. Well, it's a long discussion. On the absolute plane, it is the energy of the Lord. On the absolute plane, it is one with the Lord. But this is a very deep subject matter. 
For the sake of our puppy brains, we have to make a distinction between material world and spiritual world. Although on the absolute plane, the material energy is simply manifestation of Krishna's energy to Lord Vishnu. Kudra Mastishto di Amba Dara Evang Chinma Jagate Kattato Gautada Ekinto Chinma Paramestor Teke Jara Chinma Shabkisho Yante Bhavane Shokti Krishna In that sense there is nothing material Evang Shai Dishto Gautada Ekinto Chinma Shabkisho Yante Bhavane Shokti Krishna So Shastra says, therefore, when you become fully Krishna conscious Shastra Bale Ye Japan Ati Purnu Gautada Krishna Bhavane Hale The entire Mahatangwa Mahatangwa, the great cloud of material energy that's what's called the material world that big big cloud, giant cloud who can measure the size of that huge cloud but for one who becomes pure in the heart Bhagavad says that, that this vast unmeasurable so called material world shrinks down to no larger than the amount of water and the footprint of a cow. The Bhagavad Gita says that the Lord Krishna is the Lord of 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 the Lord it's an incredible magic show. The so-called material world is nothing but a magic show of the Lord's fantastic energy. Once upon a time, the great sage Markandeya Rishi. He has has friendly relations with Lord Vishnu. Something more than Aishwarya Bhav, more or less friendly relations. That's also some element of friendship there. So he's having a conversation with Lord Vishnu in ordinary ordinary persons can have a conversation with Lord Vishnu, but Markandeya Rishi is having a conversation with Lord Vishnu. He knows that Lord Vishnu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is not confused about that. He is having a conversation with him. He says to Lord Vishnu, my dear Lord, I don't know anything about your materiality. Although self-realized souls know everything. For those who are completely 100% pure in the heart, the material world is rather theoretical. They have no experience with the material world because they are hard as completely 100% pure. So then they have no experience with the material world. We have lots of experience in the material world. 8,400,000 400,000 species of life. We have experienced already. Before coming to this human life and then the human life so many births before we kept this position of being awarded devotional service by Siddha Prabhupada and his representatives and the So although they know everything in their full of knowledge, but these self-realized souls uh, they have not directly experienced the material world because they are transcendental. So, Jodhiyo hai Jodhiyo hai Jodhiyo hai Tara Tadir Mondi ko Tani Kunta Aapto Pasto Ko Jivatma Tara hai Jodhiyo hai Sambu ke Sop Kitu Jante Paren. Therefore, Mark and Jay Arishi makes a request of Lord Vishnu. So, Mark and Jay Arishi Bhagavan Vishnu ke Omruk Kori Chiren. He says, my dear Lord, I don't know anything about your material energy, your Maya. I've heard about it. I don't know anything about it. Why? Because he's completely transcendental. 
not in it. never been in my app, so we know nothing about it. So, it's just curious, just curious. What is this Maya I've heard so much about it? What is it? I'd like to know something more about it by direct experience. Lord Vishnu tells them, my dear Mark and Deya, I don't think this is a good idea. <laughs> I don't think it's a good idea for you to uh, experience with your energy. But he's too much controlled by curiosity. No, no, my Lord. I want to know about it by some realization. I know it exists, you know, I know I've heard about it, I've heard so much about it, but I have no direct experience. My dear Mark and Dea, not a good idea, really not a good idea. There, you see, this is such uh, juicy nectar. There's another uh, story from Shiva Bhagavatam. Then, uh, when Lord Shiva heard about the famous uh, Mohini Murti, he had heard from sages and saints that she was incredibly beautiful. Very sexy also. So, Lord Shiva has friendly relations with Lord Vishnu. It's not a hundred percent Aishwarya or formality. He has friendly relations also. So, he said to Lord Vishnu, my dear Lord, I've heard about this. Mohini Murti is something fantastic, of some unknown form of, of Lord Vishnu I've never seen. So again, Lord Vishnu said, uh, I don't think this is a good idea. Lord Shiva is a little proud of his austerity. He's famous as an ascetic. You know, he sits up in the Himalayas there. Uh, under a tree with no facilities, nothing. Extremely austere. Most of the time, full of control of his senses. He likes sensuality also if he's in the mood for it, but he's also extremely austere. So, there's a different aspect of his uh, complex personality. So, I'm um, hearing about Mohini Murti from the sages, he was too much curious. My dear Lord, I've heard about this amazing form that you assumed of a beautiful woman. But unprecedented ever before. Never reveals anybody before. But I want to see. Lord Vishnu says, you know, she is extremely beautiful, you know. You might lose control of your senses. Lord Shiv says, who, me? I want to see for the key. Come on, I'm famous for self-control at the bus here. What are you talking about? I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get out of here. There's no chance that I can lose control of my senses. I'm famous for the bus here. I'm going to get out of here. You know about my lifestyle. Very austere. I just live under a tree, covered with ashes, skulls, you know, like that. I'm surrounded by Buddhas, you know, and other hobgoblins. So, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get out of here. I'm 
It depends on what guy you tell them what my mouth is. Who is the greatest personality in the whole creation? Since the sages have been debating the time of memorial. Who is the greatest personality? Who is the most powerful? So naturally the name of Lord Shiva comes up sometimes. Somebody might bring up the name of Lord Brahma. Other big, big, huge personalities make him up, but mostly Lord Shiva. Foolish persons think there's some kind of competition for Lord Vishnu. Only fools can think like that. So therefore, throughout the Shrimad Bhagavatam, there's so many pastimes in which Lord Shiva is proven to be subordinate or, you know, Underneath, that is to say, lesser stature than Lord Shiva. I mean to say, Lord Shiva is lesser stature than uh, Lord Vishnu. Again and again, it's proven throughout the Shrimad Bhagavatam. So this is proven in the pastime of Mohini Murti. So Mohini Murti. Lord Vishnu is mischievous. Lord Shiva is chasing after her for sex. Very conspicuous. Whoever was watching could easily tell what was going on, that he wanted to capture her for sex. Any fool could understand that's what he was trying to do. So then, on purpose, Mohini Murti runs in front of gatherings of the greatest sages, Vyas, Narada, and others, you know, all the big, big sages from the universe, and different, in the words, enclaves, in different sections of the forest where they were gathering for Harikata. On purpose, Mohan Mahindi ran in front of those stages <laughs> with Lord Shiva running after her, uh, you know, what? <laughs> He was so overpowered by lust that he was passing semen as he was running out. Don't blame me as an Shema Bhagavatam, it's not my fault. Everyone should read that story, it's a great story. True history of the universe. So as she's running, her sari becomes loose. It appears that she was not wearing a tight sholay on her name. So she's running and all her body parts are becoming exposed. And the more her body is exposed, the more Lord Shiva becomes mad with lust. This is being shown in front of all these big, big sages. They know who she is. They know that she is Lord Vishnu. In this way, it's only one of the pastimes in which uh, Lord Shiva is shown to be in a lesser position than Lord Vishnu. So this is one of the narrations from, uh, from Shastra that proves Lord Shiva is not on the same level as Lord Vishnu. It's proven in this pastime. Back to Markadeya Rishi. So, uh, Lord Vishnu says, I don't think uh, I don't think you should try to. Why not? My, my energy is I don't think it's a good idea. Also, like, oh my Lord, please, I want to see, I want to understand. I just, I can't understand and I have no comprehension what your my energy is. I would like to see by realization, by revelation, I would like to see it. 
So in the next clip of the film, so to speak, uh, Margaret Richie finds himself in the ocean of devastation of the universe. Almost drowning, floating, suffering a great deal for 10,000 years. So in this way, he's not in a happy situation, so he's experiencing Maya. He's experiencing Maya because he's suffering. Maya means suffering, just like we're all suffering because we have this body and mind. So we were suffering for so many thousands of years. Then in the distance he sees an island floating. Island? Island. Oh, okay. So I that That island is Navadip Dam. Very well. Somehow or other, Navadip Dam is not destroying the waters of the devastation of the universe. I think it's in the Navadita Mahatya. Navadita Mahatya. It's described there. This story is, I think, if I'm not mistaken, this story is coming from Navadita Mahatya. Navadita Mahatya Mahatya. Anyways, now deep is floating there, you see. That is destroyed. Something like a lotus flower floating in the water. So he saw that was very relieved because, you know, he was suffering too much. So then after some time, finally, the Maya show is complete. Maya Deka complete way. It disappears. And on top it will go away again. Like what she does is that's what that word says. And the whole show is only temporary. And give away both the things and see them the first time to go in. Sure. It's nothing but a top of the line, first class. Best quality magic show, that's all it is, so called material world is nothing but a magic show. All of a sudden, Makadev mm -hmm. Rishi finds himself peacefully sitting in his uh, foot. Where he started out from. So the whole thing was illusion. That's a good dream. So this dream that we believe in is called Bhata. It's called the material world. How much we believe in it? We believe I am Indian, I am Bangladeshi, I am Chinese, I am Russian, this thing, that thing. So we have to therefore become free from this bodily concept attachment to the body. We have nothing to do with this body. I'm American, I'm Russian, I'm Chinese. They talk to you they have a body. That's what I'm going to do. I meditate on the words of Bhakti that is our story. I want to. And the whole show is only temporary. So that's shown in his past time of Markandeya Rishi. Just an incredible magic show. Even in this world there are magic shows that are amazing, you know. So called impossible feats are done in magic shows. But that's nothing in comparison to the manifestation of so-called material world. The best magic show in the entire creation. The Buddha of Tisti Mante, Saptake Bhara Gadakara Sanyati, Dharma of Tisti. So Srila Prabhupada has descended from Goloka Vrindavan just to help us 
come out of this magic show. When we see Jagannath Bhaja Yasa Bhajara, when we chant the Holy Name, we should understand it has nothing to do with the material world. Some of you thought when we started out that Jagannath Baladev and Subhadra, they live in the material world. Can't be. Not possible. Wherever there is Krishna and Vrindavan,